Hello brothers and sisters, how are you doing today? It's Brother Anson coming to you again, sharing another nugget. Again, it's so blessedly wonderful to spend some time with you on this day. And today I wanted to talk to you about something that is going to be happening pretty soon, if it hasn't happened already. By the time you hear this message, the elections in the United States of America would have been close to us or it would have just passed um, and so I just wanted to reflect on that for just a, sh a little bit the Bible has so much to say about kings and governmental leaders in Proverbs 29 and 4 it says a just king gives stability to his nation but the one who demands bribes destroys it a just king gives stability to his nation, but the one who demands bribes destroys it. God has called leaders to be righteous leaders. God wants all leaders to be righteous leaders. God also has um, influence over every single thing that he has created. And so God can actually command leaders if he so desires um, to do whatever it is that he chooses. But God is also a God of that allows free will. In Proverbs 21 and 1, it says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth them whithersoever he will. So if God really wants to, God can command leaders. We've seen this um, in this different instances within the Bible. We saw, for example, Pharaoh was commanded by, the, by God um, to act and do things in a specific way. Now, I won't get into to, to the actual details of that because there was a certain um, heart, a certain characteristic that Pharaoh possessed and God just simply used that characteristic. God doesn't change our nature, but God will use it um, to accomplish his will, however he, he so desires. Okay? We should all desire good leaders. And so as we focus upon the election that is happening. Um, we need to recognize that all of us who are here in the Caribbean, I'm here in Cayman, uh, many of you that might be watching me, uh, you're, you're somewhere within the Caribbean. You're either in you know, Barbados, you are in the Bahamas, you're in Jamaica, and some of us might also be in the United States of America. And we know um, that the elections in the United States of America, this is going to be an extremely pivotal one and this is something that is probably going to be watched more and followed more so than any other global issue in this world. Um, regardless of any country, if they hate the United States of America or if they love the United States of America, the thing that matters is that people want to see who is going to be leading that nation. Amen? And so, God, we should be desiring... Um, good leaders, regardless of whoever it is, we should be, des be desiring that they're good leaders. Why? Because it makes for a good, prosperous existence for us. Proverbs 28. Proverbs has a lot to say about leadership. Proverbs 28 and 2 puts it like this. Due to a wrong, to a wrong doing of a land and its leaders, due to a wrong doing of a land and its leaders are many. But a person of understanding and knowledge, so it endures. Let me read that from another version. Let me read that from the New Living Translation. When there is moral rot within a nation, its government topples easily. But wise and knowledgeable leaders bring stability. And so before we even talk about leaders, before we criticize leaders, and I know many times, you know, I'm guilty of that as well. We are so quick to criticize leadership, whether it be governmental leadership, whether it be leadership in the family, whether it be leadership within the church, whether it be whatever leadership within the community, anywhere. We are always very quick to point out the shortcomings of the leadership. Um, but before we do that, we ought to pray for our leaders. Amen? Um, and that is pointed out in 1 Timothy 2, and I'm going to read from 1 to 4. Uh, it says, I exalt thee, and this is Paul speaking to Timothy, and he says, I exalt therefore that first of all, all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for 
all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, which are leaders, kings, prime ministers, presidents, that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And so if we desire to live a peaceable life, we ought to be praying for our leaders. How many of us do that? If you don't do it, then it's something that we must start practicing. Um, you know, many across the United States of America today, we see there's such a great division between the conservatives and the, and the liberals. We see it's never been like this before. It's extremely polarized. And, you know, maybe they can learn a lot just by following. You know, the Bible is so real. The Bible gives us examples as to how we ought to live our lives in, in a way that is pleasing to him. But we turn away from those, you know, the precepts of God, from his word, and we try to live a life unto our own self. And God doesn't want us to do that. And when we do that, we end up going in a direction that he does not want us to go. And so we should be we should be remain prayerful for our leaderships. Um, but kings and presidents and, and leaders also have a commitment to us. Kings and government leaders should always remain sober-minded so that they can make a righteous and a prosperous you know, judgment on our behalf. Um, in Proverbs 31, 4 to 8, it says, It is not for kings, O the male, to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol. For if they drink, they may forget the law and, if, and give not justice to the oppressed. And so God wants kings and leaders, leaders to be of a sober mind. And that's absolutely necessary. Amen? But in all these things that we look at in terms of our leadership, one of the things that we need to understand is this. Regardless of whoever is a leader, um, leaders will always make mistakes. But God is not doesn't judge them only by the mistake. God judged them uh, essentially based on the heart, the state of their heart. Do they have repentant hearts? In Psalms 34, I'm reading from 18 to 20. It goes at least. The Lord is nigh unto them that are broken hearted and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones and not one of them is broken. God wants us, even um, regardless of where we are at, and especially leaders, to have that spirit of repentance, that spirit where we can be corrected because we will make mistakes as leaders. God wants the ability to be able to correct us when he needs to. Amen. Psalm 51 and 17, and this is a famous psalm that is penned by David after he done such something that was absolutely atrocious in the sight of the Lord. And he but but David was always a man after God's own heart. Why? Because David was a man that had a repentant posture. It, in, in Psalms 51 and 17, it says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. So by God's own nature, he cannot turn away indefinitely from a heart that is repentant. As long as there is true repentance, God will not turn away from such a heart. So as we look towards this, this elections that's going to be taking place in the United States of America, we ought to be engaging. Let us pray that the leadership, both uh, the Biden and Harris camp and both the Trump and Pence camp, let us pray that this leadership will submit to God. Let's pray that this leadership uh, will have repentant hearts. Let's pray, pray that these, this leadership will be guided by God, that they will have that posture and that desire uh, to work on behalf of the people, that they will be doing all that they can within their power, not to execute their own um, desires, but the desires of the Lord. Amen. And so let's pray that over them uh, today, even as you go, or we go in our separate ways, let's remember to hold them in prayer. I want to leave you with this. Ultimately, Trump, nor Biden, nor Harris, nor Pence, None of the none of these, none of the governmental leaders um, can really bring us salvation. 
Let's take a leaf from a, the real true leader, the real true king, the real true prime minister, the real true president that really, really makes a difference. And that's, I, I'm, I'm going to look at John 18 and 37, where Pilate is speaking to Jesus. Uh, therefore, it's in 37, it says, therefore, Pilate said to him, so you are a king. And Jesus answered and says, you say correctly that I am a king. For this purpose, I have been born. For this, I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. So today, I want to urge you, as much as we pay attention and we pray for the leadership in the United States of America and indeed wherever we are at, I urge you to remember that ulti the ultimate king and the ultimate leader that we need to pay allegiance to is Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can be our Lord and he is the only one that can save us. I bless you today. I want to see you again next week. Um, and until then, God speed, God bless and keep you safe and keep you wonderful. Have a great day.